What's going on everybody? It's your buddy, it's your pal Spaz Phoenix, and this is Flix Fix. Haven't done any movie related stuff for a long time. Been doing some other stuff, obviously with uh, AEW, WWE, we're, uh, we're really, really busy with the wrestling stuff right now. But I did say, when I started doing movie stuff again, um, you know, look for the next Marvel thing, look for the next DC thing, look for the next Fast and the Furious, look for the next... Uh, uh, what's this called? The the Keanu Reeves one. John Wick. Uh, look for the next, uh, you know, a lot of things. The next Indiana Jones, uh, for that matter. Uh, Halloween Ends was a cool thing that I meant to do a, a podcast on, and I never did. But I did say, because I do really, really enjoy the fucked up shit. I mean, I did a podcast about Cocaine Bear. Let's be real for a second. I did say, when Saw 10 got closer, when we got a trailer, when I had an idea of what the plot was going to be, then I would come up and I would uh, I would talk to you guys about it. And, unbeknownst to me, the trailer's been over three days now. I don't know how I missed that. We're going to talk about the trailer in a second. But what I do want to do is, before, before I talk about the trailer, before we talk about Saw 10, Saw X, everything's got an X on it now these days, even Twitter. Uh, before we get into that, I'm going to tell you, same, same as I told you guys about, oh yeah, Scream was the other one I was looking forward to this year. Uh, like I told you why I like Scream, like I, I would tell you why I like Halloween if I ever come back and talk to you guys about Halloween. I'll tell you why I like, uh, I'll tell you why I like the Saw movies in general, because it's, it's a gross franchise. Uh, if you look at it, uh, from an objective point of view, but I watch a lot of fucked up shit, so the gross shit doesn't bug me, so the psychology is what draws me in, and movie structure is what draws me in, and when you're just going for, for gross out, like body horror stuff, like how do you up the ante, how do you up the ante, how do you up the ante, um, is always a question that you're going to ask with a movie like this. What I will say, the unique identity of the Saw franchise. Um, when, I, when I talked about Scream, and I said, you know, the first one was about horror movies, the second one was about sequels, the third one was about trilogies, and it was reflective, and it was meta, but it was it, it, it treated itself in a very reflective way, and then when they got into the new cast, uh, they started talking about what requels were like, and social media, and all that kind of very self-referential stuff. With Marvel, you've got this, this almost entrapped feeling, uh, where if you're following the Marvel thing, you're following all of it. Uh, if it wasn't connected, I would not waste my time with stuff like Ant-Man and Captain America and probably She-Hulk and all that. But you have to, because it's all connected, and, uh, the identity of those Marvel movies is that if you miss something in one movie, uh, you're not going to enjoy the next one as much. You know, you, you couldn't watch... You couldn't watch uh, Infinity War as your first Marvel movie. It would be fucked. What I love about the Saw movies, and I, when I say this, I mean like the structure of the movies, the structure of the series themselves. And I've said this for a long time, and I've said this to anybody that will listen. You watch the first Saw movie. You watch the second Saw movie, and you think differently about the first movie from then on. You watch the third movie, you think differently about the first one and the second one from then on. You watch the fourth one, it goes back. You watch the fifth one, it goes back. You watch the sixth one, it goes back. You watch the seventh one, it goes back. You watch Jigsaw, it goes back. And then Spiral's a separate thing. We'll talk about that in a second. Now, there is the, there is the law of diminishing returns, and I will say, if you look at the series as a whole, I'm looking at them all sitting on my shelf. Some of them are so old that I actually have them in DVD, not Blu-ray. Um, Saw 1, 2, 3, as a trilogy, awesome. Absolutely awesome. Uh, 4, 5, and 6, it does start to dwindle, I'm not going to lie. Saw 7 wrapped it up nicely. Obviously, for me, the um, for those of you that know, um, I'm a really, really big fan, or was a really big fan of Linkin Park, specifically Chester Bennington. Obviously, he's not with us anymore, R.I.P. Uh, him having the cameo in 7, awesome. When 7 was called the final chapter... I thought, okay, we've wrapped it up nicely, we brought back Dr. Lawrence Gordon from the first movie to be the final student, and, and it's all good. Never mind the fact that we killed Jigsaw in three, he came back in flashbacks in every movie, it's all good, it all makes sense. Then they did Jigsaw, and it was the closest to a prequel that you can imagine. And I went into that one, and I'm like, because I love the, I have a, I have a good respect and a, and a, and a fascination with the, with the Jigsaw character, with that 
makes me a huge fan of the series as a whole. When they did Jigsaw, I thought, please don't fuck this up. And they didn't. Like I said, closest thing to a uh, prequel that they've ever done. And then, when you heard Chris Rock was doing his own Saw movie, which is Spiral, which is not a Saw movie, but takes place in the Saw universe, I was like, okay, really, really intrigued by that. Let's see what they can do with this. But again, here's this thing that I love. Please don't fuck it up. And they didn't. So that's nine. When seven was supposed to be the final chapter, you've got nine movies right now. We're looking forward to, to ten. Why do I like it so much? because Tobin Bell, the actor the actor that plays John Kramer slash Jigsaw, has created the closest thing to a Hannibal Lecter, Silence of the Lambs, intriguing antagonist than I, than I can imagine in this genre. If you ask me about Halloween, I love the simplicity of Halloween. Michael Myers is just a bad guy that's going to do bad things. The John Kramer character... Um, as is revealed in flashbacks, as we as we go forward in the movies, we learn more about his his uh, backstory. Uh, you learned about the the tragic loss of his child, what happened to, between him and his wife, his cancer diagnosis, the fact that he was misdiagnosed because of other people's carelessness, and he was mistreated, and he was cast out, and all of his business people, um, you know, sort of went to went to shit on him, and he basically lashed out at the world, tried to kill himself. And wouldn't die. Basically, uh, he drives his car off a cliff. If you're not, uh, if you're not familiar. But if you're not familiar, why are you listening to this? He he drives off a cliff, and he can't even manage to kill himself because he's got too much will to live. And that feeds this this uh, this mythos that he sort of creates around himself, where it's like he doesn't. Uh, and I'm saying that I got to be very careful with how I say this, so I don't sound like a psychopath. I'm saying this from his point of view. He doesn't kill people. He gives them the opportunity to fight for the right to live. That's from his perspective. And it's really, really gross, and it's really terrifying, and he thinks he's transforming people. He thinks he's giving people a new appreciation for life, starting with the drug addict that accidentally killed the uh, killed his kid while this kid was still inside his, his wife. And then we went on from there, and, you know, the Amanda characters uh, and the other, the cop and the other one whose names I can't think of off the top of my head, which is terrible. Um... He not only is out there improving the lives of people, again, in his point of view, he's also recruiting sort of disciples to continue that work when he's gone because he knows he's sick and all this type of thing. And what they achieve here, like I said, he, he's not like Anthony Hopkins in the fact that, you know, Anthony Hopkins is very charismatic and like almost classy in a really scary way, but he is, he is, um... He is drawing in a certain way. Uh, for those of you out there that are wrestling fans, and if you come to this channel, you mostly come for wrestling stuff, uh, you know Jake the Snake Roberts existed in a, in a world of wrestling where everybody was shouting and hyped up, and, and all, all the, everybody, the, the energy was on 10, everybody was dressed in neon, and he would just come and he would whisper his promo into the microphone, and that made you listen more. And that's what the John Kramer character does when he's talking to his... Victims, we would say, but his subjects, I, I guess you would say from his point of view. And the thing about it is, is he's doing a really, really bad thing. But the more you get to know him, the more you get to know his mythos and why he does what he does and what has happened to him to make him the character that he is, you you aren't defensive of him as a person, he's a bad person, but you're defensive of what he's trying to do. He's trying to make people appreciate their lives. He's doing it in a terrible, horrible way. I cannot say that enough. But um, if you're a fan of his, or if you're a fan of these movies, and you're a fan of, uh, of, as I say, the amazing job that Tobin Bell does with this character, you can't help but sort of defend what he's trying to do. And the best example of that is when you go in about four movies and some of his disciples, specifically Amanda, I think it is, uh, she starts doing traps that people can't get out of where they're dying in terrible, horrible ways, like they do in the Jigsaw traps. But you're so along for the ride with Jigsaw now, you know his mythos, you know what he believes in his, in his, his hierarchy of thought that even though what he does is bad, you still look at what Amanda's doing and say, oh my god, how could you do that? How could you mess up his his vision? Even though his vision itself is bad. And I think that's fucking brilliant. Now, why do I bring that up? Why do I why do I harp on the on the brilliance of Tobin Bell and the John Kramer character? Because he dies in the third movie. There's 
right now, again, I'm going to say it again, there's nine of these movies. Now, I'm not, Spiral's kind of a spin-off, so that's kind of a different thing. So we'll say eight. There's eight movies where the main character really died in the third movie. He comes back, like I say, in flashbacks, and we learn more about his backstory, and we hear other people talk about him, and uh, we hear more about like what formed him into what he is, but in present day, if you're watching the movies, anything that's not a flashback, anything that's present day, he dies in the third movie. This movie, this Saw 10, is not quite a prequel, but the closest thing to a prequel that we've got since Jigsaw, this movie comes out placed between Saw 1 and Saw 2. And I have to believe, I, I do not have anything to base that on, please don't get me wrong, but I have to believe that the reason that they chose to do a movie at a time where, where John Kramer is still alive is because that character has to be alive. <laughs> I don't think you can go any farther. I don't think any... Because they all fail, and they all sort of, like, corrupt his teachings anyway, and you don't really... Like, you look at all the new students that are supposed to be the next Jigsaw, and in the words of one of the victims, you're not Jigsaw, bitch. Uh, as one of the... I think it's four that ends with, you're not Jigsaw, bitch, before she closes the door and says, game over. And she can't even say game over the way John Kramer says, game over. So it brings us to the point now where we have this movie, Saw 10, that is set between the events of Saw 1 and Saw 2. Now, much like The Purge, Saw 1, very enclosed. You got the two guys in the room for like 90% of the movie. Every now and then you see sort of what's gone on in the rest of the world and you see the people that are trying to find him. But more or less, it's the two guys in the room. I've got the names up here somewhere. It's Adam and it's Dr. Lawrence Gordon. Dr. Lawrence Gordon who will eventually, when you get on to uh, the final chapter, find out that Lawrence Gordon, surviving all this, cutting off his own foot, becomes the ultimate student of Jigsaw, but you don't know that at this point. It's these two guys and how they're going to survive getting out of this room where they're shackled to the floor. It looks like a dirty bathroom without a toilet. And, you know, one of them wakes up in the, in the bathtub, etc. And... Um, Everything from then on becomes a big, massive universe. Like I say, my, my example is always going to be The Purge for something like this, where something starts small and immediately the next one blows up. He's there in the small room. I think the budget for this was something ridiculously small as well, and that kind of works in its favor. Um, but it, it started off small, and then the very next one was uh, the next uh, movie was the six victims in the nerve gas house. Uh, Plus, plus one of the detective's kids who's off in another uh, direction entirely. Much like The Purge, focused on one house, one family living within The Purge, and then the next five or six were like, look at these whole cities, look at these whole states, look at how The Purge has affected everybody. It's a big worldwide thing, even though, you know, it was a worldwide thing in the first one, but we focused on one house. Um, but yeah, it's, it's really ridiculous that we're going to have to go sort of between the explosion and the very small story. So let's get into the trailer. Uh, two things I'm going to say right now. There's one link that I'm going to put down in the box below. It's going to be the link to the Lionsgate YouTube uh, channel where you can see the proper trailer that I'm responding to right now. If you want to, go click down in the description box right now, watch the trailer, and then we'll get into what we see. The other one, and this is just a quick shout out, this is just something that I really, really like, and I'm going to actually bring it up so I know what it's actually called. Come on, TV. There we go. Uh, yes, I just called my computer a TV because I'm smart. I'm, the other link I'm going to put in the description box below, and if I forget to do it, somebody please message me on X at Spaz Phoenix, and we will fix that up right now. It's a link to a YouTuber by the name of CZ's World, and it's a video called Jig. Uh, sorry, Horror History: The Complete History of Jigsaw. This guy, I don't know who this guy is. I don't have any relationship to this guy. He's not a YouTuber that I know. He's not somebody that I collab with or anything like that. I just think the guy's content is incredible. He's specifically horror movie based YouTubing stuff and he's got a video. I will, I'm, I'm not going to lie to you. It's an hour and 10 minutes long, but it is the en entire chronology of Jigsaw uh, from when he's born to when he died, how he became who he was. As, as, and it's all the information that you he's collected from all the different movies. And it's this amazing, amazing timeline. It's documentary quality. So I will say, if you are a big fan of the Saw series like I am, go watch Horror History, The Complete History of Jigsaw, and then go and watch the trailer for the movie that we're about to talk about. 
But as I say, we're popping up between the uh, the first and the second installments of Saw. He's just had his cancer diagnosis. His doctor's basically telling him, you know, we, there's nothing more we can do for you. It is what it is. The diagnosis is what it is. Um, there is somebody I can I can refer you to, and it just shows a website for some doctor woman on the screen. Um, she takes over the voiceover. She says, well, I'm going to have to bring you down to Mexico City for this experimental thing, whatever. Shows him being wheeled into the emergency room, and they're giving him a lot of hope. They're telling him everything that they're going to do. And before he goes under the knife, he asks one of the women at his side, he says, what's next? And she smiles at him, and she boosts his confidence. says, what's next is your whole life. Isn't that nice? Isn't that uplifting? Isn't that beautiful, wonderful? But... Flash forward to somebody else telling him, like, look, we're looking at your scans right here, and nothing was even removed. Nothing was removed, and you have months to live. The brain tumor is definitely still in your head. Now, here's the thing. It's not a rug pull, because we know that the tumor is still in his head, because we see in Saw 3 when he has to have, like, a really, really, you know, Home Depot-style brain surgery happening while he's testing all the students and, uh, or sorry, all of his subjects and whatever. So we know that whatever they did either didn't work or they didn't do anything. But he gets the rug pulled out from under him because it's in the past and he doesn't know that yet. Uh, nothing's been removed. Everything is still there. You've got a couple of months to live. And he says, well, I've still got work to do then. Gathers up all the people that conspired to scam him on the trailer. It even says, you know, this is Jake's, this is John Kramer's, uh, most personal game ever and then from there you just see people getting gathered up and, and just sort of waking up and finding themselves in their new surroundings and then all the beautiful cliche puzzle pieces pun intended of the saw franchise start coming into play the tape machine drops from the ceiling you see him in front of all of them and he says the immortal line it's time to play a game you see billy the puppet come in on the tricycle like you did before. Now, if you watch the horror history thing, you, you see that Billy the Puppet was initially a present that he was he had built for his kid that never got to be born because one of his first uh, subjects was the guy that knocked into his wife and made her have a miscarriage and all that. So Billy the Puppet um, sort of becomes this symbol of vengeance for him. I do like that in a sense because he's not... I have to say this again, in his own way, he's not out to kill people. He wants to, like, basically punch the world in the face and tell it to be better. And without sounding like a psychopath, that is something we can all get on board with. So we have, we see Billy the Puppet come out, we see um, his his uh, recordings uh, coming out as a voiceover to his next victims. is like, you, you know... All the people gathered here are the ones that gathered to scheme me. Uh, now it's your turn to suffer and feel pain and all that kind of thing. Uh, the only difference is I'm not giving you any anesthetic. I'm pretty sure you'll want to remain alert for what's to come. And as he walks away from them, and it, the, I mean, the trailer's all cut to hell, so this is not in any kind of order whatsoever. But as he's walking away from one of the subjects, he, he clarifies to them. And this is in his sort of in, in his his dogma of his belief of it of his method and all that kind of thing this is not retribution this is not revenge this is your reawakening and that that sort of sums up the the john kramer jigsaw mentality which i think is so fucking good if you can get on board with it because like i say again as objective sane people he's doing terrible things but if you want to get if you want to get into the movie, you have to see these movies from John Kramer Jigsaw's perspective. And I think I think that's it's a weird thing to do. And if you can't do it, then you're probably not watching movies like this. Um, you see a brief flash at the end of the trailer, somebody taking off the the robe with the pig's head that has become another common thing in these movies. It's a it's a one second shot of Amanda, who we we know will go on to do further things, who will actually uh, oversee Doctor Denlin in Saw Three when she's giving him the uh, out of nowhere brain surgery when he has to cut the section out of his skull, etc. And you see 
a quick flash of a couple of things that are happening. Fingers are being bent backwards, and he's telling one guy that he has to drill into his skull if he wants the key to let himself out and whatever. And as all that's happening, as all those flashes of different violent images and the reveal of Amanda are, are happening towards the end of the trailer, you hear a voiceover of somebody. Now, I don't know who this somebody is, but I love this as a tale for the trailer. It's just, of all the men to cheat, you picked John Kramer. And that sums it up perfectly. It really, really does. Um, and that line only has relevance to us because we know everything that happens after this movie. But that whole, even at that point, even when there's only really been the events of Saw 1, where it's implied, uh, again, I really do encourage you to go check out CZ's World and the Complete History of Jigsaw, but there have been many other subjects before the events of Saw 1. But basically, those were sort of ramshackle, and then they kind of sort of eventually figured out that they were all being done by the same person. They eventually gave him the name Jigsaw. Um, in, a, in a further movie, he actually goes on to say that I never asked for the name Jigsaw. That was something that the police and the media came up with. The, piece of, the Jigsaw piece that I cut out of my subject's skin was only ever meant to symbolize the piece of... Uh, the piece of them that they were missing, the uh, the primal like human instinct to survive, which I also think is really, really cool. Um, now, I will say the last thing, and I want to I want to end it on this. This is not good shit. These are these are not good movies. What these movies succeed in. And I'm trying to I'm trying really hard to find my words here because I've had these conversations with lots of people because lots of people uh, when they hear that I like the Saw movie specifically how oh my god how could you like that first of all I watch a lot of stupid shit I'm really desensitized far more desensitized than I ever should be that's another story for another day but also the psychology of it is is masterclass this is why I get pissed off when other things came along like the 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 grossest example is Hostel. The, the hostile movies exist because people saw the popularity, such as it was, of Saw and assumed that that possibility came from all the wrong things. Saw has a lot of gory shit in it. Saw is about the psychology of John Kramer and the little mini movement that he tries to put out there into the world. And because of that movement and that mentality and those teachings, if you want to put it that way, a lot of gruesome stuff happens. But it's the psychology that brings you to the movie. But people saw this very, very surface level shit. And it's like, oh, those movies are really gory. People like really gory body horror movies. And that's why we got bullshit like Hostel. I'm sorry, that's just my opinion, but it is what it is. What they do with the Jigsaw character. Um, if, you, if you ever watch a movie where they can make you side with the bad guy, that's an effective movie. Now, I don't side with John Kramer, but now nine movies in, I do think I understand him, and I want to understand more about him, and that type of investment in the, basically the bad guy, is probably more unnerving than just taking his side, like on a service level. Um, it is one of those things, when you go to a movie like this, that makes you think, oh my god, am I, am I even, tr why would I even bother to try and understand somebody this, you know, diabolical and violent and, like, some might say soulless and all that kind of thing. The movie makes you want to understand it. The movie makes you want to say, no, this guy is not just a psychopath that's killing people, he's got a purpose. And if it can pull you away from, oh, that guy's just a bad guy, throw him in jail. If they, any step that they can pull you away from that, the movie's done something. And obviously, I've watched nine of them. They're sitting up there on my shelf as I'm talking to you guys. I want to know more about this character. I want to understand this character. It's uh, it's why, in real life, people are obsessed with uh, serial killer franchises and serial killer documentaries and whatever, where we've gotten past, eh, they're just a bad guy. I'm kind of intrigued. I'm kind of curious. I want to know what the meaning is. I want to understand it. Because, in a different scenario... Understanding why somebody does something is the first step to maybe being on their side. And the amount of stuff that John Kramer has done in these movies, if you can even make me take one step towards being on his side, then you've you've produced a pretty effective mindfuck. And September 29th, 
we're all going to get our minds fucked again, or at least the ones that are going out to the theater see this, like I am, I'm sorry, I'm making a day of this, I'm getting some steak, I'm having some drinks, I'm sitting front row center in the IMAX like I always do, and I'm going to watch Saw 10. Are you guys watching it? Are you guys looking forward to it? Have you seen the trailer? Let me know what you think. And like I say, uh, go, I'm going to say it one more time. Go to CZ's World, check out the complete history of Jigsaw and horror history, watch the trailer that I just reacted to, uh, tell me if you agree, tell me if you disagree. If you are a big fan of this franchise, tell me why. Is it the same reasons as me? Is it different reasons? I don't know. It's probably kind of fucked up that I'm looking forward to this as much as I am, but we are where we are. Anyways, that's all I've got to say. Saw 10. We finally got the trailer. I'm really excited. I've been spazzed. You're... I was going to say YWC reality check because this is not a wrestling video. Fucked up my ending once again. I've been Spaz. This has been Flix Fix. Subscribe up there. Talk down there. Start a conversation. Keep all these conversations going. Don't be a stranger. I'll talk to you. Nevertheless, I want to be later. But for right now, I'm out of here. Bye, guys.